I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now waiting, better believe in your mind Cause it's everything You can mold, shape, find almost anything Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I released a video yesterday and in that video, I screwed up. I was using some charged words and phrases and I was using them in sort of unconventional sorts of ways and because I was vague about it, people interpreted the words that I was using uh, in the way that they're usually kind of uh, used. Uh, what am I talking about? Well, this is a very important video, but it's not very visually interesting. So while we talk about the topic of this video, we're gonna do a visual tour of our entire homestead property, even going down into the woods. We'll see how far we get. Uh, what am I talking about? Well, I use the phrase climate change and I use the word actions. And when you usually hear those, you hear the climate's going to change unless we take actions. Wasn't talking about that at all. Climate change is coming. There's nothing that we can do about it at this point. You can recycle all you want. You can put solar panels on your house, buy a Prius, all that kind of stuff that like the Green Revolution talks about. Uh, it's not going to change it. It's coming. And the only thing that we could potentially do is uh, the changes that have not already been baked into the cake, you know, so things that are even worse than what's coming. We could maybe change our actions and maybe prevent some of those, but that's not going to happen either because people just don't care enough. Climate change is coming. Get ready for it. Deal with it. Uh, and uh, what I was talking about in the video had nothing to do with climate change coming unless we, you know, no, there's no unless. What I was talking about is that there are a lot of people in the world, myself included, who believe that climate change is a real thing and that it's coming. In fact, the preponderance of the population believes that climate change is a real thing that is coming. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be cata cataclysmic. It's going to be this, uh, you know, earth shattering, horrible, horrible life threatening, life ending. It's going to be awful. The, the majority of people believe that climate change is a real thing and it's going to be awful. And what I was questioning is why aren't those people taking action? Not action to stop climate change. Like I said, that's not going to happen. They're powerless to do that at this point. It's coming. The actions I'm talking about that they're not taking are the actions that you would take if you saw any kind of uh, you know negative cataclysm coming in your future. You're driving down the road in a car, you see a brick wall in front of you, you kind of tap the brakes. You know, it's too late to like say that the brick wall is not there anymore. The brick wall is there. But how do you react to that? You know, what are some of the things that are coming down the road? Let's get specific about, uh, you know, the climate change thing. What are some of the things that these people that believe the climate change is a real thing? What do they believe is coming down the road? Sea level rises. I mean, that's pretty uh, a, a ubiquitous belief among people who believe that climate change is a real thing. The seas are going to rise. Why aren't people taking action? If you live in a coastal area and you believe the climate change is coming and that the sea level is going to be rising and storms are going to be worse, why aren't you leaving these areas that you are screaming to all the rest of us saying, you know, the coasts are going to flood and, you know, there's going to be all this death and destruction. Why are you still living there? This is what I'm talking about. There are people out there that believe that these horrifying apocalyptic changes are coming and they're not taking any action not to stop them from happening. Can't happen. Not going to happen. They're not taking any action to try to protect themselves from it. Here's another thing. Uh, massive crop failures with droughts here and floods there and, you know, the agriculture business just being turned upside down on its head. We've been seeing that for the past couple of years. Droughts, fires, you know, the crops can't go in because the ground because it's mush and mud and all this kind of stuff. You know, uh, the availability of food uh, is going to be more challenging in the future. What could you do about that? We're not going to be able to stop that from happening. It's baked into the cake. These changes are coming. But what could you do to make that situation better for yourself and your family? Protect yourself and your family from it. Stock some food. Do the majority of people that believe that uh, climate change is coming stock years and years, decades worth of food? No. They believe these things are coming, but they do nothing to prevent them. Another thing that people talk about is climate refugees. People, uh, you know, leaving these uh, flooding coastal city areas, people leaving these areas that are just, uh, you know, like Las Vegas, Nevada. It can't exist if water just disappears in that area. You know, p human beings can't exist without water, at least not on this scale. I mean, you could have like an, an outpost, the Las Vegas outpost, and that like a truck goes in with water. <laughs> but the city, uh, you know, if the water just isn't there anymore, the city is going to evaporate. What's going to happen to the people? People aren't going to evaporate. They're going to become refugees. You have climate refugees moving to different areas. There's, uh, you know, uh, civil unrest because of that. You know, it, whenever there's a lot of people kind of coming into your area and things aren't always great for you, you figure you, you want to be angry at someone, you might as well be angry at the new people coming in. You know, there's going to be uh, refugees. There's going to be civil unrest. There's probably going to be violence. 
what are you getting, uh, what are you doing to get ready for that? You could get ready to defend yourself, your home, your family. There are tools that uh, a lot of the people that believe that climate change is coming want to make illegal so that they would be unable to protect their family from this cataclysm that they believe is coming. They think this thing is coming and what they're t the actions they're taking right now are things to try to make it so that they are less able to protect themselves and their family. That is what I was talking about in the video yesterday. That you have people out there that 100% believe that the kind of stuff that preppers talk about is on its way. Terrifying, earth-shattering, you know, life-ending events are just over the horizon. The majority of people believe that that is coming and they're doing nothing about it. And so that's what I was talking about in yesterday's video is that a lot of us here in the prepping community, we like to try to, uh, you know, we want to try to help people. It's a human uh, impulse to want to try to help people. You know, uh, we have prepped and we've realized a lot of the benefits that it has had for our live, lives. I mean, the world hasn't ended uh, for, you know, the vast majority of people on the planet, but there have been a lot of headaches that uh, myself and other people in the prepping community have avoided because we prepped and we, well, like toilet paper. Remember the big toilet paper shortage? I still had cases and cases of toilet paper. I was, I was hoarding toilet paper that I bought years before the whole thing. And that was very convenient. And it was, it's, a, it's nice. We want to kind of share that stuff with people. And our tactic oftentimes is thinking, well, you know, the reason I prep, the reason I do all these things is because I see these things on the horizon. So maybe you don't. Maybe that's the reason you're not prepping is because, you know, you don't see these things on the horizon. But if you did, you would be in a position where you would think to yourself, oh, maybe I should be prepping. And we tend to think, us preppers, that, uh, you know, we can make the world a better place by having more people prep. And that's true because uh, the majority of the problems that come from uh, disaster events really come from people's lack of preparedness for them. You have a town, uh, like a town, and nobody's prepared, and you know it's coming some kind of like a hurricane that whips through. You've got like people that are starving, people can't get water. You know, people are fighting for this and that and the other thing. You have a town that's full of people who are prepared. The town, the storm whips through. You know, it destroys some structures, whatever. But by and large, people are okay. They were prepared for it. There's no violence. There's no crime or whatever. The world's a better place when more people are prepped and prepared. So we want to, you know, we want to help other people, but we also know that it makes a world better for us when we can get more people prepping and preparing. So we try to convince people to get on board with it. And the tactic that we use, like I said, is we try to convince them that, you know, there were these things that could happen. Wouldn't it be nice to be ready for them? But I think that's folly. And this is what I was saying in the other video. I think it's folly uh, to rely on that tactic to try to get other people on board because they already think that the world's ending. They already think that this stuff is coming. They are probably, a lot of these people think that, uh, you know, a lot of the things that are coming are probably worse than the things that you're prepping for. Uh, and yet they don't do anything about it. So that's what I wanted to talk about in yesterday's video is this, uh, the schism between uh, people's sense of what's on the horizon and what they should do about it. And the, the answer generally is nothing. And what that flows into is how bad do you think this collapse is going to be? Like we mentioned, when you have the two towns, one's prepared, the other's not prepared. When you have the town that's prepared and the storm comes through, you know, the, the crunch, it's not that bad. I mean, yeah, you could have a tree go through your house or whatever, and that sucks, but you don't have like a gang of, uh, you know, marauders at your door, you know, uh, wanting to eat your, your calves because they're, they're starving to death. And by calves, I mean your legs, not your, your cows that you have. You know, the world's a better place if we can convince people of that, but we don't really need to convince people of it because they already believe that the end is coming and they're not doing anything about it. So how bad do you think, uh, you know, our situation is going to be? Are we going to be like the town where the majority of people were ready for it? Or are we going to be like the town where the majority of people weren't ready for it? We're going to be like the town where the majority of people weren't ready for it. And that is going to make it so much worse for all the rest of us. So for us preppers, you know, I'm going to keep doing what I do, try to spread this awareness, you know, do what you do, uh, but don't get too frustrated about it because you don't have to convince people that bad things are on the horizon. They already believe it. The problem is convincing people to do anything about it. And I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> so what's the point of this video? Get ready. <laughs> That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.
And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.